Well, for those who have read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, uh, chapter one, the title says the rich don't work for money. And most people don't understand that because they've already been genetically programmed from parents and schools to go to school and get a job and work hard for money. Now, the harder you work for money, the poorer you get. And the reason for that is money was designed to steal our wealth. You know, I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing because it makes me richer. But uh, like the yin and yang of life, everything has opposite sides. So everything that rich dad taught me was opposite of what my rich dad, my poor dad, my, my poor dad was a school teacher, you know, good people, but they don't know anything about money. Right. So on one side, my poor dad's always saying, work hard, you know, go to school, get a job, save money, and get out of debt. On the opposite side, the yang side, was, that's, no, don't do that, you know. So when I wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it was about the opposites. That's all it was. And the rich don't work for money. The richest people in the world don't work for money. You know? But the average person, it's not part of their consciousness. So you look at Steve Jobs. His paycheck was $1 a year. Right, same with Bezos as well, right? Yeah, yeah, they don't want money. So the reason I say and I do and I speak and I teach is kind of just the yin and the yang. You gotta see the other side too. Because so many people, and I don't know about here, but the economy is pretty bad in America, and they're rushing back to school. Gotta be stupid. School teaches you nothing about money. There's fewer and fewer jobs, and taxes are higher. Why would you do that? You know, if you save money, you're taxed. You work hard at your tax, and you put your money in a retirement plan, you're taxed. That's not that intelligent, but that's what they teach you in school. So it's opposite, and that's why I come up on stage and I talk about the opposite, just to open your mind a bit. You said uh, that, that education is not putting stuff in, but pulling stuff out of your brain. You know, I have a 10-year-old now, and I'm looking around London for her secondary education. I'm looking at all these schools, and then I, I hear what you say, and I'm thinking, are they going to teach her the wrong things? Should people not go to school, or should they go to school questioning what they're being taught? Well, that's the most important thing, question it. You see, if you just assume all schools are equal and all schools will do a good job, you're not doing your job as a parent. Obviously, you should question and then ask yourself, what does my child need to learn? So if you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, they're not learning what my poor dad, my rich dad taught me, excuse me. You know, it's like, I don't want a job. He imagine being in high school, you know, I grew up in the 60s going, but I don't want a job, <laughs> you know, and they go, and it, um, it violates all the Puritan beliefs. You've got to work hard, you've yeah. got to be a tax-paying person. But I don't want to do that. And in most schools, that type of philosophy or thought is not uh, allowed. You know, I got spanked, scolded, thrown out of school for having what they call radical ideas. But again, I said, Steve Jobs made $1 a year, Bezos $1 a year, I don't want a paycheck. And I'm not giving you the answer. I'm just saying, why don't they want a paycheck? And that's when you start to learn. When you ask the question, you start to learn. And as a parent, you gotta ask yourself, what are, the, what are they gonna teach my child? Yeah. You know, will they damage my child or will they educate my child? Education comes from the Greek word educe. Educe means to draw out of a person. But what schools too oftentimes do is they put in, not draw out. So they're kind of giving her a subconscious message that you're doing all this training so you can work for someone someday, and that's you know, what I think. Right, and and buy a house. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. Right, okay, yeah. and buy a house that's not an asset, buy a but a liability. Yeah. And work up these school loans, and then you pay them off, and it's almost I don't know. I guess it's not a slave mentality, but it really is this. It's a paycheck of, mentality. A paycheck mentality. Look at the other side. They say don't get into debt. I'm in debt up to my balls. <laughs> right. You know? Because as a businessman, you want some leverage. Well, there's good debt and bad debt. Right. See, Bad debt is debt I have to pay for. So my house, I have to pay for it. So it's bad debt. Mortgage is bad debt. At the same time, I have about 300 million in debt. But it's good debt because my tenants pay it off. My, you know, I'm a landlord. So I'll say it again. So good debt is debt that somebody else pays off for me. Right. And so that was the lesson of rich dad, poor dad. And my, the way my rich dad began teaching me when I was age nine was just playing Monopoly. You know, four greenhouses, one red hotel. Love that game. Yeah, today I own red hotels, you know. And I go back home, and my family, they're all school teachers, they say, oh, Robert, have you found a job yet? I go, no. Oh, too bad, too bad. 
You see, they can only see one side of the yin and the yang. Right. The rich are the other side. The, my point is, the reason it's hard for the poor and middle class to get rich is because the philosophy, the thoughts, the actions, the education is opposite. I don't save money, I borrow money. Okay, once you understand that, go, why would he do that? Well, if I can borrow money, I never, I never have to say, I can't afford it. You know, I can afford anything I want as long as I can borrow for it. So debt is good, but it takes education. Okay, you said uh, once that inside every one of us is a poor person. Inside every one of us is the one that goes to the supermarket and thinks, oh, I better buy the cheaper this or buy the cheaper that. Yeah, me too. Okay. <laughs> and uh, like I'm, in this, I'm in this hotel. Right. And they want $8 for a bottle of water. I said, I'd rather drink tap water than pay $8. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I can afford the $8. It's <laughs> right. just insulting that they want $8 for a bottle of water. <laughs> right. But you're saying that mentality can hurt you as well because it, ha it yeah. puts you in a frame of conserving my income as opposed to going out. And it's just being conscious. Okay. You know, being conscious of who is talking at this moment. Is it the poor person? Right. So that, so, like it really was last night, my wife and I got checked in their hotel room and said, want a bottle of water. I want to pay $3 for the bottle of water, but not eight. You know, so there was a battle going on between the rich person and poor person inside of me. Finally, the poor person was, I'm going to drink tap water, even though it kills my health. <laughs> and that's, I, I go to the same problems that anybody else does. Right. And then that poor person is the conservative person, the person that doesn't want to take risks, the one that wants to conform. That's more the middle class. Oh, that's the middle class. Okay. So the middle class person who the middle class believes in a big paycheck, good education, job security, and a pension. You know, so they, like when I was, I was a Marine pilot, most of my friends stayed in the Marine Corps, not because they loved the Marine Corps, but it was a good pension. And I said, well, that's not very spiritual, you know. Or most school teachers want the steady paycheck. Now, my point of view is, psychically, that's what they broadcast on to a child. Right. So if the teacher believes in a steady job, a steady paycheck, and no risk, and job security, any idea a child may have, like your child may say, well, I don't like that idea, they get crushed. Right. Okay, that's and, the risk. Okay. okay. And also subconsciously they're getting this message that these people are happy to kind of have these jobs for life and collecting these paychecks and yeah. And then when I say, well, Steve Jobs goes paid a dollar a year, it doesn't compute because it's not inside their little box. Right, right. You know, outside the box thinking, well, that's not possible, you know. Right. You know, you go around the world, you give up and you give these huge talks. I know your parents always said it was important for you to be of service. And is that something that's always on your mind? Oh, yeah. Because you don't have to do this. I mean, you can stay in Arizona. You know, you've got your books and everything. Is that, do you feel like that's something we all need to do? I don't, I don't like to speak to all people, but I do think that service is important. Like I served the Marine Corps, not because I wanted to fight in Vietnam, but because it was service. You know, and once I got there, I'm glad I went there, but I'll never do that again. You know, I, um, the U.S. government lied to us in okay. Vietnam. Okay. And at that point, I said, I'm out of here. And you knew that at the time, or you realized that later? I, I realized that there because I was a top secret officer. And okay. once I could see the truth coming across the messages, because they're lying to us. Okay. You know, we weren't there for the hearts and minds of the Vietnamese. We were there because of oil. So if you look at Vietnam today, there's a war on in Vietnam yet. And it's for the oil rights off of Vietnam. That's, that's why Royal Dutch Shell is there. That's where Conoco is there. That's why those guys are there. We fought for oil. Always remember that all wars are about money. Money, right, and power. Yeah, well, money and money. war. Look at ISIS. I think that's kind of, you know, I don't agree with what they're doing. But they took what we know, they, they captured the oil fields, which we're bombing right now, and then right. they buy our weapons and they come kill us. I say, well, they're just doing what we do to them. <laughs> right. You know, they're not stupid. Would you, you say that a lot of, of this generation has this entitlement mentality where they kind of expect things, expect the job and expect the paycheck? What do we do about this generation? You know, should they go to the military or how do we get people to kind of snap out of that entitlement frame? That's hard to say. The entitlement mentality is alive and well in America. Before, it used to be the American dream. Right. You know, you're from San Diego yeah. and all that. Yeah. It was the American dream. It's in your blood, you yeah. know, when you grow up there. And today in America, is the entitlement dream, you know, that I'm going to get somebody to take care of me. You look at America today, 47% don't pay any tax. No, I'm not saying it's good or bad, because the rich don't pay tax either. Right. But what's happening in America, as you know, is that the government should take care of me, which is socialism. And I'm not saying one is right or wrong, but I'm a hardcore capitalist. You know, I don't 
I think I should work for my money. I mean, I should provide for myself. I don't want the government to take care of me. So it's just philosophies at war right now.